firstly, number one, technique. You want to learn good fundamental habits. Everything I'm referencing here is in regard to physical preparation for high performance of Australian rules football. So when I'm thinking about technique, I'm thinking running efficiency, running mechanics, uh, how well you can run uh, at a slow pace, how well you can run at a high speed pace and how well you can run at sprinting speed, how well you can accelerate, how well you can decelerate uh, and your uh, lateral um, ability. So you change your direction work, um, which is um, there's lots of different ways that you can move across the, the field of football. Obviously it's 360 degrees. So to check out some different movement patterns that you can practice specifically for Australian rules football, head to our YouTube channel, uh, our agility playlist to check out some drills there. But technique there on the field, that's fundamental number one. Number two, your technique in the gym. Tip number two, healthy habits. So what we're thinking around here, not so much building towards elite habits and putting that pressure on, I'll try to live an elite lifestyle. I think you can save that for later on. They've got plenty of years ahead of them to think about things like, you know, supplements and making sure they're counting the calories and getting in naps during the day and extra recovery sessions or, you know, mindfulness and going above and beyond with all this extra workload um, that can take away from the fun of the game. And I think that's number one. So what we want to more um, phrase is just developing healthy habits. So that's a healthy habit can be just simply enjoying the game and remembering why they started playing, um, which will typically be having fun with their mates. So keeping that at the front of the mind, make sure they're eating healthy food. So good sound nutrition it doesn't need to be fancy, but just simply eating food that comes from the ground, both vegetables and, and fruit. Tip number three, balance physical training with academic responsibilities. Well, these days, making you know, clubs are really keen on helping the athletes have a life outside of football because typically footballers will play their best football and, and a sustainable long career when they've got things outside of the game that they can focus on. So whether it be study, whether it be a trade or whether it be learning uh, some form of, of craft, whether it be real estate, plumbing, uh, electrician, or perhaps it might be some business skills around hospitality. So I think developing that and putting a, a real premium on uh, making sure that they're not just focusing on football, but they've got things outside of football from a young age is really, really important. They've got hobbies outside of the game that they enjoy, and but also they're studying and they're putting Good work into their schooling and and ideally of graduating to year 12 so that it's a lot easier for them to be able to go to university while they're playing tip number four foster resilience and a positive growth mindset so the parents can play a big role in this make sure that you're really celebrating the wins along the way and making them feel proud for for the hard work that they're putting in and the and and that they're really enjoying the highlights uh, and share that that enjoyment with them um, but equally when they're going through it's a, it's a brutal sport so when they're going through challenges and setbacks maybe they're out of form or they're not playing the position they want to be playing in the coach is playing them in a different position um, perhaps they haven't made a a, a rep side um, whatever the setback might be it could be an injury um, that they're uh, you're listening um, to them to go through those so challenges they really feel like they're heard um, and they've got a, um, a support network is really really important um, and and get uh, experts around that can uh, uh, experts in that field. The last tip, number five, ensure adequate rest and recovery. So making sure that there's a real value around sleep. Uh, I think that's really, really important. So obviously there's going to be a tendency to want to stay up late and play perhaps video games or stay in mates places and things like that. Make sure that there's a routine the night before, or even two nights before game day. So they're they're starting to think about and valuing sleep as a, as a real key. There's consistency in going to sleep at, at night and waking up at a certain time. A school obviously helps that, but when we're in holidays, try and stick to a, a rough routine. It might mean that they get a bit of extra sleep to help with their growth and development, but you don't want to be having heaps of fluctuations. So really getting getting across to, to your child that sleep is so, so important, both for their performance, but more importantly for their long-term health and growth. 